G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy after a very uneventful round 23. <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> actually. Ha <laughs> the dog is one, the dog is one, the, 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 the dog is one. Take that, how do you feel? I feel fine. I feel thriving. Yes, Jersey, congratulations on uh, winning an absolute stinker of a derby. That wasn't a fist bump, was it? That wasn't a stinker of a derby. It, it was for me. Yeah, not for me. I loved it. It was a good game. How, how did it feel to be on the winning end for once? Ah, very good. Euphoric. I was just soaking it in, Jesse. It's not very often that it happens. And it was just like a moment of reflection of how shit the last five years have been <laughs> in the derby. So for us to just beat West Coast, it's just a... Ah, Sigh of relief, weight mm. off my shoulders. Yeah, I feel the same. If you're looking for a review of the Western Derby 53, you can find it on the Drew Footy Show uh, that we just filmed, uh, which will be out right about now. And also I did a reaction to that on my own channel as well. So go check out the last uploaded video. But we will crack into the final, just the tips of the Home and Away season. Of course, we'll continue the series yes. through the finals. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's the last time we're going to be talking about all nine games. And I feel like that in this upcoming round, there's a few mini finals before the finals Massive. coming up. Yeah, We'll go through the last week's result. We both got six each because mm. um, you ended up uh, sticking with West Coast in your tipping. So on the overall scores, you have moved to 124, but you have slipped down to 89th on the ranking. So the hopes of that top 30 finish have been dashed, but I'd imagine you don't care too much about that. These upsets uh, are killing me though, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. The last month I've been really been slipping. Yeah, I mean, I've never really been a great footy tipper, but I feel like the upsets are like more than ever mm. this particular season. Um, I'm on 112 with uh, a ranking of 432nd. Believe it or not, that's actually a, a slow improvement all year. And dad slipped uh, down to 200. 121st with a total score of 119. We will shout out the weekly winners of this show as well. And this week it goes to Aiden B97 with nine correct tips, uh, which is outstanding considering you know that would have included tip of Hawthorne and uh, Frio and, and Fremantle as well. So yeah, well done, Aiden. Um, the overall leader is still Ignatius Sim with 133 and a margin of 612. He's absolutely killing it. And the fantasy leader. This is actually the, a new leader. With this is the first time this person has been leading Isaac Burnett with an average of 2081 and the team Burns Beasts um, absolutely killing it so well done that is an outstanding average and uh, yeah both of these competitions it's getting quite hot up in here I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> Drizzy you've probably noticed that I'm somewhat clean shave. I did uh, go full clean shave a few weeks ago, um, but my own efforts at growing a full beard are quite pathetic for a man who's nigh 28 years old. I uh, just clearly don't have a beard in my jeans. But if you have a beard in your jeans, you can go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word at checkout. You can get rid of that beard in your physical jeans <laughs> and uh, yeah, you'd be supporting the channel as well. So go check them out. Now let's get into the video. Remove the beard from the jocks makes the cocks look Look tops. Ooh, don't know about that. <laughs> One thing I actually do want to address before the first game is uh, the fact that uh, the people who watch this video, only 50% of those people are actually subscribed to the channel. So our goal of hitting 15,000 subscribers by grand final day on True Footy, it's uh, it's almost dashed, Jersey. But we could really use some support uh, if you could click subscribe. We you need you. Content. We really do need you. Please, please validate me. <laughs> Let's get into the round. The first game of which is the Western Bulldogs hosting Port Adelaide at Marvel. One of those pre-final finals that, that I juice. kind of alluded to. Uh, I believe this is going to be on the Friday night. Uh, though, again, it hasn't quite been announced yet. But uh, yeah, the Dogs are obviously coming off a disappointing loss against Hawthorne in Tasmania, where they were swamped despite the fact that Hawthorne had some major outs going into the game. The Dogs just weren't good enough on the day. And I think you said on the Drew Footy Show, they kicked three goals in that third quarter and then just, you know, went home, uh, caught the early flight back to Victoria and Port Adelaide battered Port, uh, Carlton rather mm. by 95 points in probably their most clinical performance of the season and it's uh, coming at a good time. So earlier this year, the Bulldogs did peak beat Port Adelaide in Adelaide and we were talking about Port's ability to contend with the top teams but this week it might be a little bit different with the form lines do you think the dogs are vulnerable here yeah I reckon Port could win this game but you know how like people with dementia leave videos for themselves like you have dementia <laughs> like <laughs> you put this over here well I did that to myself like mid-season when Port just kept losing to top sides like mm -hmm. don't tip Port in big games <laughs> <laughs> so like in my head I'm like hmm form lines Port are looking enticing yeah. but no I mm -hmm. think uh, I'm, I'm going to just tip the Bulldogs just because Port have cucked me many times this season. Mm. Um, but, yeah, the form lines are drifting in Port Adelaide's favour for this game with the two games that the Bulldogs have dropped. 
think I'll tip the Bulldogs. Mm. Very not convincingly, though. I was going to say, I'm not confident at all. Yeah. I, I think I'll agree with you. I'll sit the Dogs. And this game has massive implications on the uh, the top four race. So yeah. if the Dogs lose this, they can slip out of the top four despite being top a couple of weeks ago uh, and, and lose that double chance and go fifth. Mm-hmm. And Port Adelaide have a chance to go back-to-back minor premiers. Uh, but it's fair to say, like, even though they haven't been respected as one of the best teams this year, if they beat the Dogs in Melbourne, mm-hmm. then you kind of say they've kind of earned it. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, beat all the bottom 10 sides. So they've beaten the sides that they're expected to. They're pretty consistent and they consistently lose to the top sides. But yeah, yeah. for that reason, just their competitiveness against the top uh, sort of four sides. I'm going to tip the Bulldogs to win this game. I think it'll be close. I'll go 16 points. Yeah, I was thinking 18 as well. I think it'll be a close game, but the Dogs will snap back into four. Next, we'll talk about Richmond versus Hawthorne at the MCG. The Tigers were mercilessly beaten again by the GWS Giants. Uh, the return fixture earlier that year, the the Tigers won that and then you can see how far they've fallen off and how far the Giants have come mm-hmm. um, by you know the Giants winning by 40 points in what was kind of mostly a home game for Richmond I know they don't like Marvel but either way uh, it was quite a telling result and Hawthorne as we just alluded to just beat the Dogs down in Tasmania capping off what has been a very very good period of about 4 or 5 weeks looking dangerous Mm. Uh, I feel like they've underachieved previously this season with the form they're showing now how do you feel this game's going to go? I've no reason to tip Richmond this week they've let me down multiple times so yeah Hawthorne are in like some of the best form in the competition at the moment with some of the sides they've beaten and they're going to want to go out with a W for Clarko. It's a massive game for them. And you see sides lift for games like these. You saw Collingwood beat Melbourne when it was Buckley's last mm. game. You, you saw, saw Carlton on the weekend with Mark Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Richmond, they've just looked pretty ordinary all season. I reckon Hawthorne, I'm still at the X factor in this game. I can't believe I'm going to tip Hawthorne in this game, but mm. I will. I'm going to tip Hawthorne. I agree with you. I don't think there's a strong argument for Richmond winning this game. Mm. I think Hawthorne win this by like 22 points. Yep. Yeah, I'll go with that deal. Next up, we've got one of these maybe mini finals, although there's a chance both of these sides miss the finals. You've got St Kilda hosting Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. The Saints put up a, a decent fight against the Ducats at GMHB. I don't think many people would have thought 14-point loss was on the cards, uh, but they keep the first five. Uh, you know, got overcome by a very strong and experienced side and uh, fell short in the end. And Fremantle, of course, snapped their derby losing streak with a very good win over the Eagles. Pretty much won the game in that second half of that first quarter and then sort of maybe not controlled proceedings, but it held the Eagles at bay well enough and deservedly got the chocolate. So still in with a chance. They need some other results to go their way, both mm. of these sides. I think Essendon needs to lose to Collingwood, but uh, this game will... I'd imagine be fixed before that, so it's kind of still going to be a bit of a final. Yeah. How do you see this game going? I'm just happy that Freo are still in with the top eight shot at the end of the season. Like, mm. I don't really care that we're not going to make the eight. Obviously, it would have been nice, but uh, I'm yeah. just happy the boys are in with the shot on the last day of the season. And it was a very good win against the West Coast, Jesse. It wasn't a clinical display because we saw how good we were in that first quarter, and then we sort of just in a way parked the bus but I think Eagles just got on top of the contest really and there was an emphasis in that uh, last quarter we sort of found our feet a little bit in the second half of that last quarter and started dominating well not dominating but getting on top of the contest a little bit say Um, less about the derby um, I think we're better than St Kilda on our day I think our best beat St Kilda's best but Frio don't have two good results in a row (laughs) and St Kilda go win loss win loss win they lost on the weekend. We had a good win. So that means that we lose and St Kilda win. Mm. And is that logic is why I'm going to tip St Kilda this week. Yeah, okay. I, uh, I'm also going to tip St Kilda. Uh, not confidently, because mm. I agree that Fremantle like, is certainly around that mark. I think this is what the game where the venue decides it for me. Yeah. It's a St Kilda home game or edge the, the home side. Um, if it was in Perth, I'd be confidently tipping Fremantle. We played very well against Collingwood on Marvel, though. That's I true. really hope I'm uh, proven wrong here because I think if our best shows up, we beat them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll tip St Kilda, but again, I'm probably like 55-45 confident. Yeah. yeah. Next up, we are saving one of the best fixtures wow. for the season to last. Geelong is hosting Melbourne uh, at GMHBA Stadium. It's a shame, again, another top-of-the-table clash that's going to be held in front of no spectators, yeah. I presume. I think Melbourne's back in lockdown, yeah. I think. so. Uh, either way, Geelong uh, sort of had a patchy couple of weeks at home, haven't left Geelong for the last couple of weeks, but their form has not indicated that they're enjoying that stretch at home, um, losing to the Giants, but also nearly bottling it against St Kilda, giving up a five-goal lead. 
and they've got Melbourne who uh, is starting to find their groove a little bit again with a sort of regulation seven uh, seven goal win over um, Adelaide and speaking of seven goals Bailey Fritch was the man of the moment um, and he's probably nudged his nose ahead in all Australian calculations as well uh, these two teams have a bit of a rivalry maybe it's a little bit amplified because mm. we know Caden lives in Geelong yeah. <laughs> and, um, and uh, it's a big fixture for him and sadly he won't be able to go but last time they met at GMHBA uh, Zach Tui kicked a goal after the siren to yeah. break Melbourne Hearts how do you see this particular game going? Melbourne are a lot better aside since then and they outclassed them on the MCG I reckon Melbourne will be fancying their chances this game and I'm going to tip Melbourne mm. to win this they were class against the Crows they're sort of finding their groove again Against West Coast, they sort of switched off in that fifth quarter after the, the <laughs> thunder and lightning delay. Mm. Um, but other than that, they've been really solid. So uh, for that reason, I'm going to tip my second team, the Melbourne <laughs> Demons, to finish on top and get the minor premiership. If this game was played four weeks ago, I would have tipped Geelong pretty... Uh, so, well, not confidently, my tipping sucks, but um, <laughs> I feel like I would have tipped them somewhat confidently. But this is almost like a... Uh, again like a mini final this is the final before the finals I feel like Melbourne's going to throw everything at this game and it could be the difference between uh, like first and third yeah. maybe for them uh, if they win they're certainly top spot I'm going to tip Melbourne as well I, I reckon their midfield gets on top of this game yeah I reckon Melbourne lift and um, and Geelong have no Tom Stewart as well um, out yeah, of the season. yeah so, um, devastating yeah devastating news so um, yeah I'll, I'll tip Melbourne in a thriller by 11 points I reckon yeah that midfield Gorn Petrarca Oliver they're just going to have a, have a meal down at GMHBA. I think their midfield's just... I don't know, Geelong's is just a bit too slow for my liking. Mm. Genuine just speed. So, I think Melbourne's midfield will get more clearances than Geelong's. I'll tip the Ds to win by 23 points. Nice! Next up, we have Sydney versus Gold Coast. Um, and this game is originally fixtured for the SCG. So, I think this is the only fixture that will change the venue. Um, mm. Assuming it won't be the SCG. Could be on the moon. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Good joke. No, I, I think this could be at Marvel or something like that, or, mm. or GMHBA, but it doesn't really matter. Sydney is taking on Gold Coast Suns on a neutral venue. Last week, Sydney uh, overcame a strong finishing North Melbourne to mm -hmm. win by 14 points. Just did enough to get the job done, although it came to the expense of Blakey, who is also going to be out for the year as well. So that right. is sad times. And Gold Coast sort of put up a pretty limp effort against the Essendon Bombers going down by 68 points at Marvel and they're scoring 30 points for the game are uh, not really confidence inspiring stuff interesting stat between these two sides so Gold Coast beat Sydney early this year by mm -hmm. 40 points yeah. they've also won three of the last four clashes against the Swans uh, so this is a uh, this is a bunny team for yeah. them, and I, I don't really know why yeah. how do you see this game going here's Drewsy's theorem coming back at you <laughs> alright form lines Gold Coast have been having popping up for real good wins here and there right mm -hmm. and they had a very disappointing game last week they bounced back the week before to beat Carlton the week before that they got pumped by Melbourne this week they got pumped by Essendon. Mm -hmm. Will they bounce back against Sydney, who they've already beaten this year? Potentially. But so, at the end of all that, it's <laughs> like maybe. <laughs> but Sydney are a better football side. They should win this game comfortably, I believe. There is no reason to tip against them. That was sort of the start of that mid-season form slump that they had when they lost to Gold Coast. And I think they're a much improved side now. They should win this game nice and easy. Head into finals with a bit of... Uh, a bit of momentum with a big pumping, hopefully for them. I'll tip them to win by 30 points. Yeah, I uh, I don't think City's been in the most compelling form, or maybe that's just because of last no, week. No, you're and, right. Yeah, so, and then Gold Coast again, so up and down. One week you think they're knackered, and the next week they win. So mm. it's hard to know. And the, the form lines between teams also, I find that really compelling. But it's the final round of the season. Uh, I don't know if there's much on the line for Sydney. I think either most likely yeah, scenario is they're still going to finish sixth. So mm. um, it's not, it's not a, a mini sort of final for them as such. But... Yeah, I think it's late in the season. Sydney, Sydney will win. I feel like Gold Coast will win now. Do you? Yeah. Well, because I've tipped Sydney. <laughs> no, nah, maybe they might rest some players because they'll... That's uh, possible. Yeah. 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 Well, subject to change, I guess, but uh, I still think Sydney win by 18 points in an unconvincing performance. Uh, and then, then in the finals, I'll turn it off. Turn it up. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Cool. All right. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got Brisbane hosting the West Coast Eagles uh, yes. on Saturday night at the Gabba. A real clash of the titans, this one. Um, the Lions coming off an 85-point victory over the Magpies, um, and they really flex their muscle. Two weeks in a row, they just batted Fremantle the week before in a very impressive performance, and they're, they're red hot at the moment. Um, mm. And I do wonder if maybe the lack of pre-finals uh, pre buy, they've just canned it, yeah. um, if that could play into their favour with their form so well. But anyway, that's a tangent. Um, West Coast obviously lost the Derby in a game where uh, lost the game in a quarter, and then... Probably 
really had the better of the contest marginally for the next three terms, but the, the efficiency in front of goal and just general skill level was poor and ultimately didn't deserve the game. And It's just been one-way traffic for the Eagles this season. It's just getting from bad to worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, buddy. Yeah. All right, buddy. <laughs> but what's on the, the table for Lions is that I think they've still got an outside chance for top four, mm -hmm. um, and the, obviously the benefit of that is securing a double chance. So um, they should be motivated for this contest. Eagles still mathematically in the finals race but even if they win this game um, it's still unlikely that they make yeah. the finals so a uh, few injuries as well for the Eagles we suck at the Gabba we're trash in general you've lost Eagles. how many in a row? two three two Collingwood Melbourne three uh, oh it was Collingwood sorry three it is three yeah nice yeah Eagles upset? No. <laughs> you upset. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's, uh, what's your um, margin then? Well, if you like combined scores in that, how much did Collingwood beat you guys by? Like 40, 45. 45. Fast Brisbane beat Collingwood by 85. So if I do my maths, that's like 190 points. The Brisbane Lions are looking very hot. They're looking really up for it. And their midfield has been running riot. Lockie Neal, uh, McCarthy has been playing really well. Cluggage and Zach Bailey, they've been all major all season playing as a real cohesive unit, which you can't really say about West Coast. So I think this oh, could be on. an absolute pumping for, for the Lion boys. I genuinely cannot see a future where the Eagles win this game. Like, I just can't see that path. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, that, uh, what's it called? Pathway? I don't know. Mm. I don't know what I'm saying here. I'm going to say that the Lions are going to fucking hammer the West Coast Eagles, and I'm going to love it as they lose their fourth game in a row and fall out of the top eight race. Prison are going to win by 56 points. 56 points. Okay, uh, yeah, this has stinky Geelong at GMHBA, Sydney at GMHBA vibes for me. I think I think we could kick four goals in this game. <laughs> uh, a couple of injuries. This is the level of disengagement with the playing group at the moment. It reminds me of late 2013 Eagles where we lost the last three by an average of 70. So I'm going to say, yeah, 80 points. Brisbane. I'm genuinely thinking, yeah, 120 to 40, that kind of game. I feel like a kid in the candy store. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything you're saying, buddy. I believe this game's most likely for Sunday. We've got Essendon versus Collingwood at the MCG. The Dons outclass Gold Coast quite easily by 68 points, continuing their good form uh, pretty much all season. There'll be one or two lapses, but generally Essendon have proven themselves finals worthy, and yeah. uh, the finals are in their hands this week as well. Uh, coming up against Collingwood, who, um, you know, it's been a case where they've just decided to rebuild midway through the season, playing a lot of youth. Um, but other than their big win over West Coast, their form has been pretty average as well, yeah. as you'd expect from a young team. So uh, that's just the way it is. If Essendon lose this game, they could slip out of the top eight, um, although there's still probably a good chance of making it, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, and then for Collingwood, they have no first round pick this year because they traded it to GWS. So GWS will be watching this um, thinking, you know, they hope Collingwood get battered and results go their way. They could end up with pick two overall. On the basis of everything we've seen, is it a fairly comfortable tip that Essendon's going to batter Collingwood? I hope not because uh, <laughs> if Freo to make the eight, we need Essendon to lose. Essendon won this fixture and they've been a much better side than the Pies this season. I have no reason to tip Collingwood. I do like their young talent. I've said it in previous weeks, but yeah, Essendon are looking like they're starting to form a good side, very solid core and a cohesive unit led by Dyson Heppel. So uh, I'm going to tip Essendon to win this game. Very safe tip. Uh, I'll tip them to win this one by 29 points. I'll go harder on that. I'll go 48 points. Mm. Yeah, season's over for Collingwood. Um, Essendon have everything to play for. Everything to play for, really. Next up, we have Carlton hosting GWS at Marvel Stadium. As we talked about previously, Carlton put in their worst performance of the year, going down by 95 points to Port Adelaide. I think it was something like 19 unanswered goals in the second half. Yeah, it was um, like 125 to seven or something oh. after the second quarter, something like that. Yeah, I don't know exactly. we're Carlton, yeah, Carlton were in front. That's just insane. But uh, they're coming up against the Giants, who uh, have put together a few good weeks in a row beating both year, last year's grand finalists um, yes. at, uh, in Victoria as well so uh, looking more and more like a finals worthy team from my understanding GWS can lose this game and are still a pretty good chance to make finals uh, considering they've got the, the two points from that draw but can Carlton shake things up and throw a spanner absolutely not this is probably the last time we'll talk about the Blues as led by David Teague as well so potentially bye bye from just the tips David <laughs> it's been nice talking about your money but your team just let you down yeah Colton have about six players that actually want to win games and the rest of them are just happy to come to the ground have a kick hang out with your mates and then go home mm. feels like and GWS are very up for it they've uh they should be in finals contention like already like they should have had 
finals locked with the side they have. Mm. I've said that many times this year as well, but um, they're, they're well and truly deserving of finals, especially out of those sides like West Coast, Frio, St. Kilda. I think GWS are the most deserving considering the sides that they've beaten. And I think they will batter Carlton. I hope they do at Marvel just to peg Carlton down again. I don't get along with Carlton fans. <laughs> um, so it could be a bit of a treat. We talked about some of their good defenders, Taylor and Cumming, on the Drew Footy Show. They've oh, been lifting. Uh, they've been lifting in the last couple of weeks in particular, I've noticed. And uh, Taranto, massive game last week. No reason to tip Carlton. I'm going to tip GWS to put an absolute axe in Carlton's season. Sack Teague and just absolute misery compilation at Blue Land. <laughs> GWS win this one by 46. Wow, that is a big tip. It is, I, I did find Thanks, it interesting. <laughs> Gross. I did find it interesting researching for this game that Carlton have only won three times against GWS. So, like, GWS have uh, won significantly more in the head to head. Why does that surprise you? It surprised me because they're an expansion side. Yeah. So, most like. We're talking about Carlton here. Yeah, I know, but like, Carlton only beat them a Carlton. couple times. Yeah. Maybe it's not that interesting, but Carlton haven't beaten them since, or have beaten them once since 2013. So the form lines here, um, there's nothing really to indicate a Carlton win. I think you're wrong. I think Carlton will actually play really well in this game just to give their fans a little bit more hope and then break their hearts. But GWS will win by 17 points. The final game of the round We've is... The best of last. Yes, the Spoon Bowl, as they <laughs> say, between Adelaide and North Melbourne. Can we get a synced up Clash of the Titans for this one? Clash of the Titans. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on, three, two, one. Clash of the Titans. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Right. So we're going to start we from the top? <laughs> right, so we start this game again. Yeah? That's what I mean. Let's just leave it. No, no, no. Go, go, go. I'm Trust. leaving all this in. All right, three, two, one. Clash, Clash of, of the, the Titans. Titans. The next game is the Spoon Bowl between Adelaide and North Melbourne at Adelaide Oval. And, uh, well, I say Spoon Bowl, but North Melbourne has locked up the wooden spoon. So it, it's theirs for the taking. They're getting Jason Horn pick one, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, uh, there's still... Maybe not a lot to play for for these sides, but it's kind of you, one where you want to go out of this season with, with a winning note because mm. both of these sides have had some positives in what can only be described as a real rebuilding season. Mm -hmm. uh, Adelaide last week lost to the D's by 40 points. Again, not really a result there you'd, um, you'd really question. That's about right. Um, Seasman was very good, but other than that, uh, really dropped off in the second half of the year in terms of their ability to, to compete with these better teams. Uh, North Melbourne, on the other hand, have sort of lifted in the second half of the year um, and, you know, a 14-point loss to Sydney is pretty good on paper, and the way they finished that game in particular, uh, yeah, the, their ability to compete with some good size as well is really impressive. Based on the form lines that you've seen, how do you think Adelaide will handle North Melbourne? I think, yeah, on form lines, North Melbourne, if this was at a neutral venue, I probably would have tipped North Melbourne, but I think Adelaide do have a little bit of a home ground advantage, so I will sure. be tipping Adelaide to win this one. But yeah, North second half of the season has been really good, and uh, they'll be adding young talent for that next season, as you've just touched on. But yeah, no, I think it's been a, a second half of the season to be proud of for North Melbourne. Adelaide, they put up a somewhat of a decent fight against Melbourne in past. They like could just find goals quite easily and you've said in the past how they can move the ball up the ground with ease at times and they've got a, a very solid midfield that's clicking well at the moment. I think they'll win this game. I feel sad tipping against North Melbourne because I've been liking watching North Melbourne but I think they'll lose this game and Adelaide will fin finish the season on a high I tip the Crows to win by 29 points. I agree with all you said. I will go different with you than you on this one. Uh, I'm going to say North Melbourne finish their season with a win um, and win by 17 points. But it's kind of 50-50. Yeah. I'm not really surprised by in either Adelaide. Result, but uh, yeah, in Adelaide, I still think North Melbourne get the job done. Yeah. Sweet, guys. That wraps up a home and away season on the Just Yay! the Tips show. Thank you. It's been a great year. We will, of course, be back for all the finals. It's been great to have you um, throughout the season. Um, hope you stick around for uh, the last four weeks. It's all going to be likely taking place in Perth so hopefully we get to a couple of finals we will try and get to the grand final I'm sure but otherwise uh, we'll be doing the grand, uh, grand final live stream for sure as well so thank you for everything uh, thanks to everyone who participated in the tipping competition as well and we'll announce the winner next week as well although the, actually now I think about it, the tipping comp goes all the way to the grand final so does it? <laughs> stay tuned yeah oh, on, nice. on ESPN footy tips it does but yeah cool yeah. thanks guys we'll see you in the next one bye I'm gonna fuck up this chicken curry so